I'm Melissa Gilbert. I'm the Child Advocacy Coordinator for Safe Harbors of the Finger Lakes. I oversee our um, youth advocacy program and our anti-trafficking program. Okay, so um, I think that the first thing that happened is you sent an email um, wanting to raise awareness about some things happening in Seneca County um, that I really wasn't, I really wasn't aware of. And I feel like I'm totally ignorant to this topic, which I feel bad about, but that's why I'm excited to be talking to you. Um, so what, what is, what can you tell us? Yeah, so um, Safe Harbors of Feelings has been working with um, the Seneca County Youth Bureau, and um, we're working under an umbrella through OCFS, which is the Office of Child and Family Services. Um, they have a Safe Harbor program um, that is an anti-trafficking program to help raise awareness, to help implement services for youth who have been trafficked or who are at risk for trafficking. Um, it could be sex trafficking, it can be exploitation, or um, even labor trafficking that might be happening in the county. So this happens in Seneca County? Yes. Yeah, so in the past year, we have had, so we've been, we've been working with the program for about three years now. I think we're in year three of our, of the program and the grant. Um, we've had eight youth this year who have been identified as at risk for trafficking or who have been trafficked um, in Seneca County. So this is, you know, that's what we've seen since 2020. We've had about 20 kids um, who have either been at risk or have been trafficked in the county. Now, what does human trafficking look like? Because it's it's a topic, like mm -hmm. what is, what are we specifically talking about? Like what happens in Seneca County that you know? So of? a lot of what we're seeing is we're seeing youth who are getting caught up in some online exploitation where maybe they're sending an inappropriate picture. Maybe there's somebody on the other end of that who is making threats to them if they don't continue to share pictures or send videos or pictures that are sexual in nature. This can even happen between like youth as well. So sometimes a youth might be, you know, in a relationship with another person and they feel comfortable to be able to send them a you know a sexual picture and then it gets shared around school or um or it gets in the hands of somebody else and so you know so some of those things we're, we're really trying to raise awareness around these things and kind of help them identify that you know how to keep themselves safe and so on so but with some of the other human trafficking things that we're seeing in the county is that you know sometimes it can look like domestic violence if a partner is making us do things to help pay rent or um you know if we're being you know, forced into, you know, like other sexual things, you know, for to, you know, support a drug habit or, or things like that. So a human trafficking is really anything in exchange of something of value. So if somebody is forcing you to do sexual things or labor in exchange of something of value, and that can be food, drugs, money, clothing, anything that is valuable to another person. I mean, that's a nightmare for yes. a young person. Mm -hmm. And I can't even imagine, like, I know, I'm, I grew up at a time where like social media wasn't as prevalent when I was in high school. Like it was a thing, but it wasn't um, it, as insidious as it can be now. Right. And so, I mean, I just can't imagine like being a young person or being a parent. And then there, there's so many ways yeah. to share pictures and then it gets spread around the school. I mean, that's just, yeah, that it's, happens. It's yeah, it's really difficult for you, I think, because, you know, being in such a rural community like Seneca County, um, you know, there's there's not a lot to do for these kids. They don't have, you know, places to go or, um, you know, things to really do to kind of keep their minds off things. So they automatically resort to like social media and being on the Internet. Um, you know, and a lot of these teenagers um, get caught up with like talking to like older men online. And, um, you know, these men are like grooming these young teenagers and making them feel mature for their age and really, um, you know, event, you know, ultimately exploiting them and taking advantage of them later on. So uh, these people, you know, if if somebody feels like they have a question or. Um, they're not sure if what they're experiencing is domestic violence or they're not sure if what they're experiencing is human trafficking. They're not sure if like they're kind of being targeted by someone in like a predatory way. Mm -hmm. um, what resources are available and like what do you hope that young people and parents and just the community at large can kind of learn from this and like 
potentially make some changes to where this is happening to less less people. Yeah. So, I mean, we really want parents to be diligent about their child's social media. And, you know, when we give a child a phone, we want to, you know, we want to instill some responsibility in them to be able to say, hey, like, this is your phone, you know, I'm going to respect your privacy. But at the same time, we need parents to be diligent about that. And um, we need to put parental controls on their phone. Um, we need to monitor the apps that they're using and um, the conversations that they're having between friends and really just kind of talk to them about how they can protect themselves and keep themselves safe and and really kind of cultivate and normalize these conversations of trafficking exploitation or even like really just like sexual abuse in general um and just you know the dangers of setting you know the dangers of um sharing pictures that are sexual in nature and how we can just have those conversations so like if they do find themselves in a situation they can say hey okay i took a picture this happened now I need help because bigger things are happening. So, I mean, where, so what resources, obviously your oh, yeah, so resources. Resources. so what resources are available for? Yeah, so definitely Safe Harbors of the Finger Lakes is a resource for them. Um, we have a 24 hour hotline that they can call. It's our number, anyone can call, any youth can call. We also have a text line that they're able to, to utilize. So if they're not really sure what their options are, they can utilize the text line. We'll give them information, encourage them to give us a call so that we can kind of move forward with um, additional options if needed. So um, they can also go to their school social worker. They'll also call us. Um, they have that counselor. I encourage them to call their counselor. So a lot of the resources that they already have at hand will also contact Safe Harbor so that they can, um, you know, get get the get the appropriate services that they need that can help them walk through the next steps. Absolutely. And so, do you um, over uh, at your organization? Do you have a good working relationship with like local law enforcement? Yeah. So we have a really great working relationship with the Child Advocacy Center of the Finger Lakes. We also provide their advocacy. Um, so we also have that working relationship with law enforcement um, through them as well. So with the investigators or even um, road patrol so that if anything were to come up, we know that we can call on them. We can rely on law enforcement to kind of um, take a statement. You know, we can be there with them and let them know what their options are as far as moving forward. And, you know, it is, it's, it is a difficult, I feel like it is, it is kind of can be a tricky subject or topic for a parent to just flat out have this conversation with Chuck. Mm -hmm. What are some of your uh, tips for parents if they feel like, you know, th they want to approach it in a way that they're like not making their child feel icky or uncomfortable about it, that it's like a more of um like a, what would your tips be to have a good conversation? Yeah, I think just coming out and ask, like, is something happening to where you feel like you can't, um, just really just asking questions, but trying to, to ask open-ended questions and not ask too many questions. So if it comes out that there is a disclosure that yes, this happened, or you know, someone is making me do things that I'm uncomfortable doing in exchange for like money or clothes or something, um, then it really should be reported to law enforcement if possible. Or you can even they can even call us and say, hey, like my child said this is happening. I don't know what to do next. And then we'll walk through those next steps. Um, but really just like normalizing the conversations and just being it okay, this happened. It's a you know, like okay, you know, and trying not to blame them because sometimes what we do very quickly is we want to blame the child for just sending the picture to begin with. Um, well, you never should have done that. But in reality, the you know perpetrator on the other end never should have asked for those pictures to begin with. Um, you know, so we really just want to make sure that they're that they feel safe to even have these conversations and say to their parent, like, okay, this happened, and then the parent just, you know, we want to calmly react, um, not ask too many questions, but get the basic information so that we can move forward if we need to go through a law enforcement or um, a mandated reporter call or so on. And um, another thing that uh, I think to consider is like the manipulation aspect of it. Um, you know, like you said, it's quick to, it, it can be easy or quick to kind of like rush to judgment if somebody makes a decision, whether or not it's like a young person or, you know, somebody my age, um, it can be quick to easy to rush to judgment and say that was a really 
bad um, move. However, some of these people um, that are on the other end of it are really skilled manipulators. Like, mm -hmm. isn't that something that you have to also bring awareness to like that, that there's like a psychological manipulation tactic yeah. to this yeah. whole thing? Yeah. So one of the things that we like to teach young people and, or, you know, kids is that um, there's something called grooming and that a groomer is going to do everything in their power to get what they want from you. They're going to say whatever they want. They're going to do anything that they want to try to get a hold of you and to really um, build a connection with you so that you feel like you can trust this person, but then really their ultimate goal is to exploit you or to take advantage of you. So um, that's something that we really try to teach kids is, you know, that, you know, this is something that can really happen. And, um, you know, and we kind of talk about the large age gap and, you know, does a 27 year old have any business being friends with a 15 year old, you know? And, you know, a lot of times they're like, no. And I was like, okay, well, sometimes they're gonna make you feel like you're really mature for your age and that you can trust them and they're on your level, you know? So we really try to build those, fill in those gaps where sometimes those vulnerabilities might, um, kind of get sucked in a little bit to that manipulation and that grooming tactic. So we definitely try to build them up, make them aware and diligent so that they know how to um, take control of those situations and get out of them. Which is not an easy thing to do. Like if you're a young person being manipulated mm -hmm. by somebody who's like more cunning and older than you, it's, it's, it's not, it's not easy. So it's so great that, you know, there are organizations like, like yours. Um, so that kind of segues me into another question. Why are you personally passionate about the work that you do in Seneca County? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been working with Safe Harbors for about seven years now, and um, I've been, you know, a part of the youth programming this, you know, throughout the, the time that I've been here. And I think that it's just really important to just raise awareness. And I just want, um, I want kids to be vigilant about their surroundings and let them know that there is safety out there and um, that they can, and, you know, come to us if they need anything. And, you know, there's just so much bad in the world that we don't even realize sometimes. And sometimes these things can sneak up on us. And we don't always know that sometimes kids aren't always taught or depending on the environment that they grow up in, they're not always taught that these things are bad. So, um, you know, I really just want to be a person that they can trust, that can help them identify what safety looks like for them. And, um, you know, hopefully that they can get to a point where they can move forward and um, feel safe. So really, that's my goal. And I just want, I just want kids to know that they have options and because sometimes they're not really taught those options. And, uh, you know, so I, that's just really kind of how I try to look at it is, you know, um, if I don't do it, who's going to kind of, think, you know, so um, right. I just yeah, have become passionate over the years and, you know, helping them identify safety statistically are is there like a specific is it is it young younger women younger men is it a mix of both is there like an age range is there an easy like is it a certain age that you that you look at or could it really be anyone like what is it really be anyone um you know sometimes human trafficking is misconstrued as like child abuse or um or even like domestic violence or sexual assault. So, you know, if a you know a parent can utilize their child, or I don't want to say utilize, but sometimes a parent will traffic their own child to support their drug habit or to pay their rent or for their own love and affection from a partner. So um, it can happen young, it can happen, you know, old, it can happen to an adult. So, but the trends that we're seeing in the county are between 11 and 17 years of age is the majority of what we see as far as like trafficking exploitation goes. When you when you have access to the internet, yes. you can have access to anybody anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. right? So I guess I was kind of just asking, is, is there a way to say that like things are different in Seneca County versus Monroe County when it comes to human trafficking? Or is it just like a lot of moving parts that, you know, we don't really... Do you know yeah. what I mean? Being yeah. rural versus 
Yeah, you know, I, I think the difference is that, you know, Monroe, there's a lot more people there, um, you know, where Seneca County is a bit smaller. Um, I also wonder how much of it is actually happening in Seneca County that we're not getting reports on. So, you know, I can only give you numbers based on what is reported to us. So, but we know that kids are constantly on the internet. We know that there's picture sharing. We know that uh, we know that things are happening, um, but it's really just getting community involvement to work together to be able to help identify this. So, um, you know, we're working closely with Seneca County to try to combat some of this. Um, Seneca County has their own anti-trafficking program um, called um, Unlock Your Voice. Um, which kids can reach out to. Um, Safe Harbors provides the advocacy for that so that when there are referrals that come in, you know, we can connect with that parent or child and set up services, get them connected to an advocate and really provide that type of support that they might need to help them identify like why this wasn't okay or how can we move forward um, through this. Wonderful. I, Melissa, you did a great job. I certainly learned a lot. I feel like I didn't even really have like the right the accurate idea of what human trafficking was in my mind for some reason. Now I feel like I have a better understanding that it's more of a broad subject and it's tricky mm -hmm. and sneaky and can happen behind closed doors. Um, is there anything else that you want to add? Um, I don't know. I mean, we're just, lo we're looking for schools to be able to allow us to come in. We have a curriculum called um, it's called Not a Number by Love 146, which is an anti-trafficking program. Um, it's targeted towards like 6th through 12th grade students to be able to help them identify what human trafficking is, what sextortion is and revenge porn, how to keep themselves safe and like how to overcome vulnerabilities. So we're, you know, just looking for support from the community to allow us to have to make room for these conversations. And we really just need, you know, more community buy-in that this is something that's happening in the county. and. A lot of times, you know, parents think, you know, not my town, not my kid. Um, but really, that's not realistic because this can happen to anybody. Um, and it, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to just be a low economic youth who doesn't have a lot of supports at home. It can really happen to any anyone. So um, I just want people to be vigilant and to um, just recognize that this is an issue and that we need to kind of come together and provide support.